Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide and this time we are getting it all in almost my floor. This awesome point and click adventure was developed by Potato Company, I just think they're neat, published by Sometimes You and is usually available for £8.39 slash $9.99 US. Now this was a bit of a fantastic story and game. We play as Alex, or kind of looks like Sid from Toy Story who's all grown up, who just wants to go home but ends up bordering on the sycophantic hallucination style of life, which includes monsters and all types of crap trying to kill you. We also play as Detective Adam Trust, who, just trust me, is trying to solve whatever is happening. Trustworthy-ish. Now, achievements-wise, nothing's really too difficult. There's, you've got your normal story-related ones, but we do have to complete a certain amount of puzzles without pressing the Y slash triangle button for using a hint. So whenever you're doing a puzzle, do not use a hint. Manual save regular if you're a bit paranoid, it's always worth doing. Few uh, quick time event related ones and easy miscellaneous ones. It is simple, but it's also fun as well. So all in all, you're looking at around one to sort of one and a half hours to get this done. So with that being said, then let us begin. Now, one thing I should actually mention first is you can die in this game. Uh, you don't go back too far. You basically start from where exactly you were. So don't panic, but you can die. So keep that in mind. So we're going to go to settings and we're going to make sure that skip subtitles is on and ticked. Press the B button to go back and we're going to new game up this stuff. And you can see exactly what I mean by Sid from Toy Story. Uh, so what we're going to do, for, normally for cutscenes and dialogue, as is the huge, we are just going to keep spamming the A button to nip through it. But what I will tell you is, this is actually a very, very, very good story. And it's one that you kind of think is probably just a bit of generic and, ah, uh, you know, nothing really happens. But honestly, especially towards the end and you realise what's happening, uh, this is a fantastic story and I really enjoyed this one as well. So... After we get through the cutscene here, an, an automatic bit's going to happen. We're going to get an achievement straight away for starting our journey on the, um, kind of looks like the bus from uh, Batman with the Joker, uh, but actually nothing at all. Kind of looks like my old school bus. Are we going to break down before we get to school? Who knows? Hopefully yes was the answer. Usually not was the uh, definitive realisation of sadness. So, we can do left stick to move. Right stick to move your cursor. Uh, if you press the A button, the A button we're going to interact with things. Normally they'll have uh, a hand, uh, you'll have an eye icon for looking at stuff, lip icon for talking to someone, and a hand icon, as you can see, uh, for getting slash grabbing something. You can also run with the left trigger, but the only time I do that is really at the end of the game. So as we begin, we're going to um, interact with mailbox number seven right here. So again, just press the A button. That is what we're going to do for interacting. And press the A button to get through a little bit of these uh, slight bits of dialogue-ness. So uh, after that then, keep spamming the A button. And then we're going to walk to the right. Ignore mashed potato right there, the woman. We're going to interact with the elevator button. And of course, just like most things uh, pretty much in America, it's all broken. Um, judi judicial system and, uh, you know, <laughs> well, well, if you're American, you just know what's broken in that country. No offense, you're all fantastic. So, after uh, interacting there with the elevator, we're going to walk all the way to the right and interact with the switch here on the right-hand side. And again, we never use the eye icon, so never bother about that. It's usually just the uh, hand icon we use. So interact with the spider. So press the A button there on the spider. And you go, oh my god, a little spider. Nah, <laughs> girly screen. Again, if you're, if you're from Australia, we're going to kill the spider, by the way. So pick the first dialogue option. And again, if you're from Australia, this literally, they're laughing. They literally laugh at everyone who screams like a little girl at a spider including everyone from the UK, because we're all a bunch of, uh, you know, fannies when it comes to spiders, let's be honest. So, interacting with the electrical panel, then interact with the neighbour on the right-hand side. Again, always using the hand icon to use it. Never use the eye icon. I mean, you can have a look if you want, but you know it's a door, so. Uh, keep walking to the left, and now we're going to speak to Masher, the old mashed potato of life. She kind of looks mashed up mine, doesn't she, to be honest? Late night, love. Right, uh, we're going to choose number four. Masha, you're looking absolutely gorgeous today. Oh, is that a little bit of AIDS I see on your lips there? <laughs> oh, no, sorry, that's just, <laughs> just what. 
So after that then, so it's going to tell you how to use your inventory. You press the X button to open your inventory, press the A button to grab whatever it is you want, and then just drag it with the right cursor over to wherever it is. So you can only interact with the electrical panel here on the right again. Now this is a puzzle. Uh, like I said, all the puzzles you need to do, you need to do it without pressing the Y button to use a hint. So if you want, you can either just follow along with what I do now, or just go ahead and skip to... 6 minutes 30 seconds for the end product, but of course you'll have to pause it, so, uh, well, it's up to you. You do you, Hans. And congratulations then, that'll be a second achievement. So just make sure that you haven't used a hint there. And you will get the genius achievement. So now we can go ahead and speak to the neighbor again. So interact with the door. And now, one, I tell you what, this is a huge uh, world strongest man. This is an Eddie Allham right here. Uh, but he's gonna give us the crowbar anyway. Literally his whole hand was bigger than our entire head. Well that's scurry. So heading over to the elevator, press the X button to go into your inventory, the A button to interact with it. Again, do that again, uh, get past the dialogue, and then obviously, like I said, it's normally the right stick to move the cursor, to move the in, um, inventory, whatever you've got about. Then we can go inside the inventory, <sighs> go inside the elevator even. Sorry, can you tell I'm not quite with it today, which is basically normal for me in every video. Uh, but a bit more dialogue is just happening here. And now he's thinking... Jesus Christ, were those magic mushrooms I took really magic? Well, they look it, because what apartment has got 163 floors on it? Connection. Wait, I'm in the elevator. Damn. So, for those people that have never done any acid or LSD, anything drug related, um, which I highly recommend you don't. This is basically what this game is like, okay? So if you ever thought, oh, I wonder what it's like, just honestly play almost my floor and you'll know. Right, what's gonna happen now is we're going to die once, which like I said, you can die once. Basically what will happen after that, we need to pick up the shield and then a little mini game will start. It's like a quick time event mini game. So pick up the shield from the left hand side of the floor, but don't worry, we're just gonna die, okay? So don't panic about anything else for a minute, we'll just die. But like I said, a quick time event's going to start. So when we come back, we're gonna pick up the shield, use the shield on ourselves, and then all the eyeballs are gonna turn red and you need to um, press the corresponding button with whichever button it is. And you have about two seconds to do that. So use the shield on yourself and then immediately, so I'll press the X button and then the Y button at the top, the A button, etc. So I'm not sure if it's gonna be random for you, but all you gotta do, just keep looking at the eyes that turn red and then just press the button that goes with it. Damn eyeballs.
And there you go then. So it was as simple as that, obviously. Um, yeah, so now we're really thinking, what in the goddamn hell titty nipple ball is going on? And I'm not going to tell you yet. Uh, we're going to wait until the end of the game for that, of course. So hallucinations are mega, but we're just going to crack on. So first thing from here, what we're going to do, uh, you can actually use your phone on yourself as well. But we're not going to bother. What we're going to do is go to the right and interact. There's a bun there's an open box on the floor just by us, just by the door. Uh, interact with that once to get some electrical tape. And I do apologize for this. For some reason, the um, my HD60 card got a bit uh, weird there. But what we need to do is use the electrical tape on the peephole on the door. So on the peephole at the top of the door. And then grab the spoke off the bike. So interact with the bike once. So make sure you put the electrical tape on the peephole rather than on the door. And that should be fine. Then grab the spoke and then we should be good to go. Now, what we can do then is just interact with the uh, missing posters or the flyers just by the elevator right there. So again, really do apologize about the bloody stuttering. I, I haven't got a clue why it's doing that. I'm going to have to sort that out because that's very annoying. Luckily, it hasn't taken uh, too much out of the game, luckily. So that'll get us an achievement anyway called Nika Nika. Why you not answer me, oh beautifulest ones? Anyway, we'll come back to her later. So, we're going to head to the left ever so slightly. Press the A button, obviously, to get off the dialogue. Go to the left, grab the spoke from the inventory, and use it on the old mashed potato head. Press the Yes button, and that is going to slice her right up the poontang. Or right up the nostrils. Or straight in the gut, apparently. Um, anyway, so we've killed, or have we? Who knows? Ooh, that's the brilliantness about games, huh? Uh, interact with the door on the left, anyway. Very nice, very nice. Head through. And, well, now we're in the apartment. And a little bit of another cutscene is going to happen. Back when it all was happy and before everyone was not nuts. So, as it turns out, Niga, who is our missus, or was, was nuts before us. Well, that's nice. Interact with the window anyway for another little, little cutscene. Holy crap! And here we are then, back in the hell, the kind of hell that feels helly. And we're just going to head all the way to the right-hand side and move out of the door. And let's see, what do we have? Yeah, dark stuff. So, of course, oh, that's scary. It's scarier than looking at your nan naked. So then, we, instead of just, you know, waiting until someone rescues us, obviously what we're going to do is head towards the right and try and go other places so, you know, we get beaten, eaten, and muck-sheaten. Now, I couldn't think of another word for it then to go with that one, but still, we're heading through the right. Let's take a look in the wondrous hell halls, is it? So what we're going to do here is interact with the door again to our left, and open that one up and go through that again. Just just to see in it. Just to see if we... Oh, no, we're in hell. Okay, we're in a helly helly. So what we're going to do is go into our inventory, use the phone on ourselves, type a new number. So go on a new number there, and then type in 666. But do not spam through the dialogue. Press the green call button. But do not smash through the dialogue. We have to choose a specific dialogue option here. So press the A button twice. And then choose no. So the second option there, number no. So with that one done, now we send an elevator. We're dead nice, but we are going to go to the left, ignoring all the creepy silhouettes and the flying eyeballs and stuff. Nip in the elevator, and there we go. Game done. Job done. That's five thousand G's for you. Congratulations. Are you making fun of me? officer? You asked. I was. Ex uh, is that?
So we've got a little bit of a bomb section, rather easy anyway, but the first thing we're going to do is basically die by it, which is nice. So, two items appear, so we're going to grab the um, bomb cutters, if you want to call them that, there's probably a better name for them. So grab the bomb cutters, then interact with the bomb to the right of you, oh, after grabbing, of course, your bomb cutters, put the bomb cutters on the bomb. Now, to get the achievement, all we're going to do is press the don't touch red button right there, explode yourself faster than a Chinese goes through your gut, and, uh, well, that's another achievement there, red button. And we're going to come straight into it. Now, that's what happens when we die a lot in this game. You basically start off exactly at the beginning of that, so don't worry if you do die, you're, you're literally wasting a couple of seconds, if that. So, this is what we're going to do. Grab the bolt cutters again, or the bomb cutters, or whatever. Use those cutters on the bomb, and we've got three little small puzzles to do, but don't worry, we've got plenty of time in which to do it in. So, the first thing we need to do is cut the wires in a specific order. So, we're going to cut the green one, which is the very left-hand side one. I'll try, try my best to explain it. Uh, the next green one, which is on the very right-hand side. Next is the pink one, which is sort of in the middle, just to the right of the yellow one. And then the two blue ones, so one on the left again, and then the one on the right. So, that gets rid of this one. Now, this is another easy one, so basically what we have to do is, in little groups, we have to do, we have to press the correct colours in the correct order. So, it's always going to be green, pink, and blue. Okay, so every time, wh whichever one it is, is green, pink, and blue, in the little sort of blocky area. So, as you can see on the right, it's green, then pink, then blue. So, you can't go over to random ones, you've got to get rid of sort of, you know, three blocks that are close together at a time, if you're playing Tetris or some. Thing. But it, it will always be green, pink, and blue. So just follow along. If you're having trouble, just follow along with the ones that I do. I try going as slow as I can here. See, I told you it looked complicated, but it was nice and easy, and the last one is easy anyway. We're going to interact with the arrow here at the top of the puzzle, and that just goes to the right. Then we're going to use the pink tube here on the left, uh, interact with that three times to get the liquid going, and then just interact with the right one once, and then click each button once. So the middle one once, the left one once, and the right one once, and that ends that puzzle. So... I tell you what, you might be off your head, but you are now a, a qualified bomb expert, and apparently a qualified shield yourself from flying death eyes expert or something. That'll look good in a CV. Oh, sorry, of course, if you're from Amer America, resume. Uh, so interact your phone with the darkness. Grab your phone out, use it on the darkness anyway. On the, the resume. Not dying, that'll also be good to put on your resume, slash curriculum vitae. I don't know why it's called the curriculum vitae, but anyway. So, we've got beautiful little lady right here on the right, so we're going to make a save. We are going to make a manual save, because again, you have to do this little puzzle first time without any mistakes. So, interact with the cleaning lady and speak to her and be like, Hey, your nose is bigger than my wiener and I'm not happy about that. Um... But it's just a quick time event, so once again, just like the flying eyes, just quick uh, press the buttons in quick succession, and it shouldn't take too long. Y A X. You might have a little bit of trouble potentially with the, just the last three right there, but if your eyes are good, you'll have no problems with it. If you manage to mess that one up and you don't get the achievement, just reload your last manual save and go again. It's as easy as pear. So interact with the cabinet directly behind you, or sort of to the left of you. And then you're going to grab the solvent out of there, which looks, uh, well, I mean, you could drink it and get yourself out of this hellhole, but it's not good. Grab the stone anyway from underneath the cabinet there as well and start heading towards the left. And um, we're going to use the solvent now on this sticky plank. Oh, where have I seen that before? Uh, anyway, <laughs> use the solvent there with the sticky plank and then we can pick it up. So, I mean, it's still sticky, but it's not as sticky, I, I assume. Not, one would assume. So, what we need to do now, we're going to go ahead to the right. And what we're going to do is grab the wooden plank and use it on the cleaning lady. Smash her square in the uh, big cock nose right there. Bump. And that destroys that. That is a boner killer. Literally. 
<laughs> right there. So after that, we're going to grab the rag from her cleaning bucket just by our leggy legs. And then head to the left again. Now what we need to do is use the stone and use it on the kind of blue ball genital warted up sticky thing to the left of us. But what's going to happen is, it's called the explosive thing by the way, there's going to be a little mini game where all you have to do is put the um, arrow in the green bar. And you'll know exactly what I mean now. There you go. So just press the A button when it gets to the green bar and that is when you'll throw. We'll get a couple, of, we'll get quite a few of those mini games um, throughout the game. And I'll obviously tell you when we're going to come to them. So grab the flower. From the left hand side, uh, <laughs> those blue gentle wards needs to be looked at, but they've done their job this time around apparently. Uh, use the keys, we've got to shut up some keys in our inventory, and use that on the door on the left of us. And then we're gonna nip in, I believe, yep, yeah, there we go. So we can just smash through the dialogue here, and we don't have to pick anything. All right then, let's head off and grab the note, which is just by the sign in the elevator there. Help! Help me, I'm being attacked by weird blue boughs. Go over to the right and we're going to grab the neighbor's rug from the floor. I'll tell you what, when Steroid Hand wakes up, he is going to be fuming. Because uh, we've actually just robbed his key, uh, rather than the rug. Go over to the left. And now what we're going to do is grab the stone again. So we need this stone in our inventory. That'll come in handy. And then there's a trap spot. You've just seen the trap spot there on uh, just, well, just below us now. So we're going to use the wooden plank on the trap spot, which should be just below us. There she blows. Stick it down. All right, job done. Job done. Right then. So from here, we are going to grab the key. And we're going to use that on the door again on the left-hand side. Next, we're going to obviously say open the door. So the first dialogue option. -y. So wait and crap your pants because we get an, an angry monster who calls us an idiot. Which is just nuts, isn't it? So it is going to be a green bar mini game again. So what we need to do is grab the stone, use it on the old... We need to blue ball the monster, basically. Which, how many times have you heard that in a night out? Um, I'm just joking. But it is the green bar mini game again, so you do get time. So, you know, you can take your time. Just be careful with it. Um, obviously, they do get a little bit trickier. Not too bad, though, um, later on in the game. But again, if you end up dying or whatever, you literally just start off at the exact same point just before anyway. So it makes no difference. So after that, we're going to grab the monster's heart. And it's going to be another green bar mini game coming up. Ah, see, you're getting good at that now, ain't you? Yeah, yeah. Right, interact with the door on the left again. And this time we are starting to fly. Go on, interact with the ting man. There we go. So we got there eventually. Maybe we're just, uh, maybe I was getting over some green bar minigame trauma where it didn't work for me. <gasps> right, so all we have to do then, we're going to scooch past these boxes here. So interact with the crates. And skinny um, Sid from Toy Story, who's all grown up and off his whackabacker, is going to scream through, uh, squeeze through, and then we're going to grab the medallion off the floor. Now, there's going to be another little puzzle after this little cutscene here. But again, it's not too bad. We just got to use no hints once again. So with the medallion we've just picked up, if you want to see the um, where the solution is, just to the right of Alex's head is the combination. So it's triangle, circle, square, square, circle. So go into your inventory, press the A button on it, and again, we have to do this first time, uh, well, just without using any hints. So at the top, at the very top of the medallion is where you're going to be doing the... Um, uh, the puzzle, basically the finished puzzle. So it has to be, remember, it's triangle, circle, square, square, circle. So the ones that have no colours in it, the ones that are hollowed out, is the exact ones you need. So all you got to do then, just press the left bumper and right bumper, of course, as it says on the uh, screen right there, to move it. Um, but that's pretty much it, yeah. So from top to bottom, at the very top of the medallion, is triangle, circle, square, square, circle, all hollowed out. Okay. Mm. 
And then I am so smart, I am so smart, SMRT, a bit SMART. So when we've done that one and we've got the achievement, now we can head to the right out the door. Again, like I said, it's always worth, if you get a bit paranoid with like achievements like that, and you accidentally press the Y button, always make manual saves here and there and everywhere, just in case. So when we're back in this weird room, what we're going to do now is go into our inventory, grab the monster heart, and use it on the mini portal just to the right of the elevator. I wonder what's going to happen there. Hmm, what's going on? Something slimy? Well, the elevator works for us now anyway, so that'll do. But it is going to be another puzzle. A uh, very easy one, though, so don't worry about that. What we need to do is use the rug now on the sign to the left of the elevator. So the rug, which kind of looks like a scroll, but it is a rug. We're going to use that with the sign. Um, yeah, well, that'll work and I'll come in handy. So now we need to use the elevator buttons. Like I said, this is going to be another puzzle which you have to do. You have to sort of figure out with the amulet. But I'm just going to tell you which which one it is. So, you just have to press the A button there to go through, as you can see on the buttons, just to skip through uh, the shapes and the colours, etc. So, let's tell you which ones they are. And I mean, it actually says on the um, amulet itself. So the ones on the left, you're going to do with the top of the amulet. So triangle, circle, square, square, circle. And the buttons on the right are the ones that are on the bottom of the amulet. So you start off with the yellow one at the top of the top of the elevator buttons. Then the blue one. Then the sort of light blue called cyan, cyan, whatever bloody is that is, and then red and green. So that's how you just um, figure out those puzzles. So triangle, circle, square, square, circle on the left, and then yellow, blue, cyan slash light blue, and then red and green. That's how you do that. With that one, let's get out of here. Game definitely not over yet. I think five people. Oh, there's I did. I have to. But huh. enter the world's most handsome detective with the greatest mustache you'll ever see, Adam Trust. So what we're going to do is not interact with the um, uh, window because he's just cutting up a dead body. That's fine. We're going to interact with the trash just by big chunky malunky right there and we are going to grab this statuette and I mean maybe the guy in the window is cutting up a dead body who knows we're not really interested in that apparently so we are going to speak to the guys now all with the dialogue options we're just going to slam straight through each one but don't keep spamming the A button otherwise you'll keep asking the same question over and over again so just be careful with it and then when you've uh, asked them both questions you can press the B button to back out Yeah, they do look like morons. You know the types that go, oh, I ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> yeah, those, you know, those types of morons. But, um, ah, Bob, ah, you said we're gonna blow him up and it should have rocket up his ass. Why are we doing that again? Shut up, Mimsy. Anyway, uh, after we've just gone through the dialogue, Mr. Trust, I trust he knows his trustworthy way, we're gonna have a look in and we are, first thing we're gonna do is interact with the door on the left. So, a few things we're going to do in the apartment room here. Uh, interact with the coat directly to the left of us, and we're going to grab a key out of that. No, not a key. For those that um, only associate key with one thing, no, it's for opening door and stuff. Interact with the diary, which is just on top of the boxes of books there on the bottom left-hand corner. And we need to interact with it again after we put the key in it. So put the key in the diary, I'll interact with it again. And then what we need to do is input a couple of codes. So the first one on the left-hand side is 1309. So 1309 on the left. And the one on the right in the red is 1204. So 1204. So 1309 on the left, 1204 on the right. And now let's have a look what she's written. Wow, my third nipple itches today. God damn. Hmm. So 
So when we're out of this room then we're going to interact with the door to our right. Bloody footprints, bloody footprints. So we interact with that a couple of times and we're going to have a little cheeky gander inside. And interact with the crime scene here on the right hand side. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, there's nothing there you floor. Uh, interact with your mashed potato herself. No offense, of course, if anyone is actually called Masher, it's a very nice name, but it just reminds me of potatoes, which is neat. So just like with the the moron guys, we're just going to interact with both dialogue options. Remember not to, uh, all dialogue options, just spam throughout absolutely everything. Making sure not to, of course, keep asking the same question over and over, because even mashed potato here will be fuming. Ooh, getting into dangerous territory now. We're starting to think with our head. Not necessarily the one on top of our shoulders, though, which uh, could come into play later on. But we will soon see if Mr. Trust get his mash potato-ish wish. So for now, we're going to head back through the door on the left-hand side anyway. And then when we're outside, we're going to head to the right... And we're just going to interact with the bike to realise that uh, the spoke has been spoken of. Or taken off. Nah, anyway. Uh, it's to interact with the bike and then interact with the door. And you're going to speak to random mega steroid hand. Who looks like kind of a little boy right here. But just keep smashing the A button to slap through all the dialogue anyway. Oh, she really boils my mash of potatoes. All right, so anyway, we are into an even hellier section of hell now. So head to the right to grab a wooden plank. It's right there. It's huge. It's monstrous. Just like that creepy eyeball uh, trying to watch you. Don't obviously walk into him because that means death. So we're going to interact. Uh, we're just going to go to the left. And we're going to put the wooden plank down on the green ooze where the Starbucks cup is swimming. Is that, what it, that is what it feels like when you have a Starbucks coffee, <laughs> your insides turn to the green ooze. Interact with the bulletin board here on the left, uh, just to get some adhesive tape. And then we're going to interact with mailbox number two, which is directly behind our head. So if you can't reach it, move slightly, then interact with the second mailbox. And we've got some, uh, what do we get now? Oh, it's a green bar minigame, sorry, green bar minigame. So smash this one. Oh, I'm crying. Ah, my whole life with doggies. Ah, oh, nah, I, I, ah, I missed that little fluff there too. But anyway, after that one's done, we're going to get the achievement called Good Boy and then interact with mailbox number 11. So the third row, third one down. And we're going to grab another item from there. Sorry, I did get them uh, mixed up there. Uh, so go to the left and then uh, go to the right, sorry, and interact with the wooden plank again. And that is the that is literally your bowels after drinking a star, uh, Starbucks cup of coffee. But Alex will automatically assemble the nails into the wood. So now we can go all the way over to the right, ignoring creepy crap coming out of the walls. Use naily wood with monster. And, well, give it. Smashes him straight in the eyeballs. And we can go to through the door on the right for another mini game. So, another mini game will be happening ever so soon. And it's only going to be a green bar mini game, but it can be quite tricky that one. So, uh, we'll come to that in just a sec. So, all the way over to the left, we're going to use the wooden board on your own bowels right now and the green ooze. Then, we're going to interact with the ashtray on top. There we go, so we get a lighter as well. And next, there is a firecracker on in the bottom left hand sticking out of the wall right there. So we're just going to go ahead and grab that one. 
there's job done and now we are going to we're basically done now with this area but remember something's going to burst out of the door and it's going to go straight into a green bar mini game so just be aware of this when we get rid of the door so the first thing to do is put the firecracker on the door then we're going to use the lighter with it and now the green bar mini game will start when we're about to get drilled and not in a good way either after you interact with the door of course Duh, what you say, boss? I said we're gonna drill him, man. Duh, but I about to drill those three thousand. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I, 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 anyway, um, that is apparently the conversation that those two had. It wasn't, but uh, it was in my head. So, after we almost got drilled, uh, <laughs> thank God we didn't, here's the cleaning lady again. But we're gonna use the phone and we're gonna use it on ourselves. We're going to use new number. We're basically going to call the cleaning lady, and when she turns around, we're going to grab her cleaning supplies. So, put in this number, 678876. So, 678876, press the call button, and then as soon as she turns around, we're going to grab her cleaning supplies right now. There we go. Cheers, Cocknose. See you in a bit. And then we're just going to head to the left. A lot of wanted posters out for us now, hilariously. So it's going to be another green bar mini game. So use the um, uh, cleaning supplies with the dirt. Another green bar mini game is going to happen. Literally does not matter. All you do is hilariously drop the broom. <laughs> so you just have to do this twice to get through the door. Be careful though, when we go through the door, another green bar mini game is going to start immediately, so just be aware of that. Monsters are going to come through, another green bar mini game is going to start, so... Ah! Do it! Do the green bar mini game. Go, go, go! Oh man, where are we at now? I do not like this no more. Right then, first thing we're going to do is pick up the bone to the left of us on the floor. Okay, now pick up the dry stick, which was again just to the left of that bone. We're going for Bone City. Next, go into your inventory, use the dry stick on the bone, which is in the top left corner, just above the hole with teeth. That'll do it, that'll do it. We're getting real bonerific right now, so pick it up. Pick it up, pick it up, shove it up the... So, we're going to start heading to the right now. Don't go into your inventory, I'm just uh, having a check for some reason. But we are going to use the dry stick on the other hole with the teeth, with the one with the eyeball in it there. So we can pick up the eyeball. Then what we're going to do is head back to the left, use the eyeball with the other hole in the wall with teeth. Man, somebody had some fantastic design ideas. Anyway, that gets us a third bone. We are completely a 100% bonerific up now. And look at that, we've done that all without a blue pill. That's good of us. Um, anyway, go over to the right, and we're going to use the three bones with the strange plant. Because, um, again, if you're going to try and go... If you're going to... If you look at bosoms without getting these bones, eh, well, the three bones, then it ain't gonna work so well. We're gonna die. So, we're gonna grab the key just behind the stranger. And then what, what's gonna happen is, basically, because we are in a complete... S <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, sorry, I thought we had to do something with the stranger, but basically, we were literally, um, you know, head first straight into those strangers' um, eyes. They looked lovely. 
Oh, God, very nice eyes. Um, <laughs> very sorry, very sorry. Please, please don't hate me. Right, another monster here, but he nips off. Thank God for that. There is a giant book here, which we are going to grab. First thing we do, interact with the left side cabinet. And we have to pull out these books in a specific order. Now, if you are colorblind, I'll just tell you which ones they are. So it's red triangle first, which is the top right one, the chunkiest one. Next is the blue circle, which is on the top left. Then it's going to be yellow square, which is to the right, so the fourth book along on the top shelf, just next to the big red one. And then the green circle, which is in the middle on the bottom row. So the third book along out of six. That is what you'll do for that one. Next, go over to the right side cabinet. Remember to do this without any hints as well, by the way. And first up is the red circle, so it's the top left uh, book. Then it's the green square, which is the fourth book along on the bottom row. Next is the red square, which is the second book along on the bottom row. And then finally, it's the blue square, which is the one uh, just next to the red square on the left there. So. When we have gotten those done, you will get the achievement called Wise, as long as you didn't use any help. And you can grab a key, so that'll be two keys for us. Use both keys with both locks, grab the book, and then head back out to the right. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and look directly square into the stranger's beautiful eyes. Uh, once again, we're going to have a little speak to her. This time, don't just smash through the dialogue. We need to do these in a specific order. The first one, we will be doing number one, which is what's your name? What's your number? Have we met before? <laughs> well, I think I'd remember. Hmm? Um, then with the second one, we're going to choose option number two. Can you help me get on the elevator? And then for the final two dialogue options, you're going to be pre uh, picking the first one anyway. So, all right, I'll go get that book, and here's your book. Take it. And then that's pretty much it. Sadly, we do not get to see her beautiful eyes anymore. Uh, but we are going through an endless elevator, so all we're doing for the next minute or two is creep into the right. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to crap your pants up. We're going to be good. So just keep walking to the right until we get to the end of the endless elevator hall. Although I wouldn't mind staying there with the stranger for some reason. Her dogs just looked really nice. Uh, right, interact with the laptop anyway when we're here for another little cutscene. Hmm. So then, we're now going to interact with the diary on the left. It's on the left-hand side cabinet right there. So give that a little, uh, a little read. Let's have a little look. Hmm. Boring, boring. Who said my win is only half an inch? Well, it's the sad truth, so, uh, well, I can make some money off it somewhere, can't I? Anyway, we're going to head for a little elevator ride again, instead of staying, staying in the safetyness that is this room, apparently.
Well, if you're wondering if Nico would be okay, the answer is pretty much a big fat... Nah, nah, she is pretty messed up, bruh. Trust. So, let us do a little bit of detective work. So, interact with Nika, who is as dead as hell, and then all we're going to do is interact with every body part. So, you need to go up to the chest, the head, the eyes, the hand, the beads next to her, and her leg, and I think her ankle as well. So, do that, and then that's this bit over with. I assume Adam Trust isn't exactly going to get bonerific from this. Although, there is some weird stuff on the internet, so, uh, <laughs> hey, bruh, I ain't judging. Okay, I am slightly. <gasps> so there's nothing left to do for the next minute or so. We're just going to smash through all the dialogue that we can until we regain control of our mustachioed legendary friend. Now, now, Mr. Truss, don't start getting the horn now for her as well. You've already got one for the mashed potato. Although, funnily enough, I think all the designers in this game went, hmm, where can we add some extra details on the woman? Women, make them look a bit nicer. No, 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 bazingas, we got two of them right there. Keep adding, keep adding, like a hot air balloon. Keep pumping them up. Like donut jelly, keep pumping them up. Uh, <laughs> right, anyway... Don't smash through the next bit of dialogue, because we are going to choose the second dialogue option. So, arrive without prior notice. So, make sure to choose the second option. Because that's what all hardcore and good detectives do. They just turn up and be like, hey, My name's... Uh, D -D Detective... D Balsack. I assume there's not a Detective Balsack in, in the world somewhere. Although, if there is, that's hilarious. Uh, anyway, we are back now as Alex. We are going for a little zoomy poom in the left hand side room. Oh, scary again. And they've made another another lovely looking character for us to interact with. So, we're not going to interact with her. The first thing we're doing when we get control is to interact with the pills. Just to the right of Katie. Dr. Freugela, who sounds like a posh French toffee yogurt or something. Uh, we'll see him in just a bit. So, interact with the photo on the right hand side, just by the window. Katie and her father. Now, you we've we seen her father earlier, who was muttering to himself, um, writing in a diary about monsters and stuff. A uh, little bit of conversation here, uh, just again, smash through the dialogue once more. Hmm. I accidentally clicked the photo, you don't have to click it again, but we are going to click the board with nachos. Notches, I meant. Sorry, my fat ass immediately thought of nachos, not notches. After we've done that, interact with the PC for a little bit of dialogue again, which we're all just going to smash through. And then finally, we're going to go and speak to Kate again. And then after this bit of dialogue option, what we're going to do then is interact with the window. But So if we are t Sid from Toy Story, is that like... Um, Andy's sister, she grew up to be mega goth, pretty fit too, I'm just joking. So interact with the window and choose the first option, jump out. We're going for a mega jump and somehow not breaking our legs. Bang, toity. Fraudulous clinic is famous. The design is off. Good evening. 
My name is Adam Trust. So then, here we are at the French-sounding posh toffee yogurts um, office. Dr. Freudula, or f or if you're just British and you can't be asked to pronounce it, Frudgeli. Um, right, so we're just going to interact with all of the dialogue options. Basically, we're going to keep uh, just smashing through all the dialogue options until Dr. French Toffee Yogurt gets called out. So you'll have to interact with five, I think. Um, and then eventually you'll get called out. Then we're going to go for a little bit of a dig around his room. For some reason, I don't know why people wouldn't do this in real life. Hi there, I know you're a, a detective, but hey, while he just disappears in, in the world, hey, why don't you just stay here and make yourself comfortable? Now, that wouldn't normally happen. So, interact with the briefcase on the left-hand side here. And again, cut a family photo, etc. Oh, little French toffee yogurt's not looking too good, is she? Interact with the desk, which is, of course, the big-looking desk thing right there. Uh, interact with the laptop, top right-hand side corner. And then put the code 1408. So that is 1408. And then we will just smash through this little bit of dialogue. You don't actually have to do anything. You can just keep pressing the A button here to smash through it. So 1408, remember, was the code. So that is that for this bit. Uh, you don't actually have to interact with anything else on the desk. I accidentally clicked the pictures, but we can now just press the B button to back out. Um, and again, I know the music. Interact with the curtain there on the right hand side. I know the music sounds, by the way, like you've got to, like you're being timed and got to be quick, but you don't have to be quick at all. So use the key card then that we got from the briefcase and use it on the door. Couple of things that we're going to grab in here. So first things first, interact with the uh, pill or the beads. Sorry, on the on the floor, just right by you, which says ale. Yeah, I'm feeling a bit ale. Interact with the pillow. That is going to get us another item, the item of uh, that thing, uh, the bottles or something. Interact with the patient records anyway, just on the floor. And then just smash through them ones. But actually, now it starts getting very interesting. So I'm not going to say smash through the dialogue because it gets very interesting to see what Dr. French Toffee Yogurt has actually done with these people. So it's not just a typical, all ah, right, he just had a dream or whatever. F really, from now on, for the last like 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes, the story gets incredibly interesting. So I would highly advise um, just reading the dialogue, actually, because it does get incredible. So we're done with here. We picked up the three items we needed. So we, now we can head back out. We're going to interact with the desk again. And then from here, we're going to interact with the top drawer. And a couple more patient records. And then what we're going to do after this one, we're just going to interact with the second drawer and then leave it open and then press the B button to back out. So, yeah, so as it turns out then, the uh, toffee yogurt was, pff, he's a bit of a bad man, as it were. So interact with the second drawer, press the B button to back out, and then once again, just smash through all the dialogue options that you can with Dr. Freudulent. I can't accuse Freudula right now. Not enough evidence. So after smashing through all the dialogue, we're actually coming up to the, the sort of final parts now, where there's not that much gameplay left to do. There's literally like five or six minutes as we climb through the window, the first window here. There's about five or six minutes just worth of dialogue at the end of the game. So, Cheeky Dill dead body, having a chill over there. He'll be having a chill for a long time. Interact with the safe then. And then what we need to do is input this code. 6897. So that is 68. Nine seven, and then that sure the thing do that automatically. 
so 6897. Oh no, you've got to press the green button there, the green tick button in the bottom right corner. We're going to be picking up the chainsaw. And we're going to be picking up the bolt cutters as well. So now that you sort of know and have an idea of what's going on, Alex has just been living in the real world this whole time, but thanks to Dr. Freudula's pills, it's made him go doolally and thinks he's in his monster world. It's the same with Nika, the same with Katie, the same with Katie's dad, and the same with his daughter. Unbelievably so. Uh, so we're just going to go all the way to the right. So head right. Which again, honestly, that was one sort of story that kind of shocked me this time. Uh, so use the bolt cutters on the chain on the door. Because normally you just go, oh, I've seen it coming from a mile off. And you probably did this time, but... Uh, as we head into the storeroom, but yeah, j just the fact of it. But it's not all in, there's a couple of twists and turns left, which you'll find out at the end of the game, when we go through all the lots of dialogue. Right, pick up the fuse anyway, directly in front of you on the floor, and then we're going to use the, uh, interact with the janitor's locker on the right, and then go ahead and grab the uniform out of the old janitor's locker. Neat Nick. Right, now, we're going to use the phone, and we're going to choose a specific dialogue option, so don't smash the A button. We're going to choose a new number, and then we're going to call 999. Hello, British police, governor? No, oh, we ain't going to do nothing. So what we're going to do, again, don't smash the dialogue here. We need to choose the fourth dialogue option I work for, Neat Nick. How neat. That's where mashed potato live, uh, works for. So now we can smash through with nay worries. There we go, job done. Now, next, what we're going to do is use our phone again, and we're going to use it on the space under the cabinet to get your torch out. Get your torch out, mate. Grab the key. Job's a good one. Right, now we're going to use that same key, and we're going to use it on the cabinet to the left of us. There we go. Now we can grab a piece of the hose and mosey on to the left out of the door again. So when we get outside, what we're going to do is head to the right, and we're going to go into this little control panel room right here. Something exciting? Not particularly. Weird death basement down there. We will be going to that eventually. Not quite yet. We're going to interact with the electrical panel. There we go. Go on, boy. Wrap it open, Tien. There we go. And then we're just going to simply click on the electrical panel again, use the fuse with it, and that replaces the broken bottom one with the lit bottom one. <laughs> lit bottom, bro. Now we're going to crawl down the creepy um, corpse basement, as it were. Turn on the light switch to the side of you. And... Ah! Spooky, scary wart monster! So he's not going to attack us or anything, we're just going to do a couple of things, and we're going to grab a couple of achievements. One, I believe, which is missable as well. So, first things first, grab the stone directly by your pants. Next, we're going to grab the lighter, which is on top of the shelf that we are standing by. There it is, so make sure to grab the lighter. And to grab the stack of paper, to uh, just where your hand is there, on the right side. Right hand side of yourself. Right, now we've got everything we need. Let us do some things. First things first, grab the stone. It's going to be a green bar mini game, but we're going to use it on the monster. In fact, it's not going to be a green bar mini game just yet. That's going to get us an achievement then called May the uh, Tomb Be With You. Force Be With You, sorry. Uh, pick up the stone again, and then we're going to use that uh, stack of papers that we got and use it in the empty space directly by our feet. So make sure then that you chuck the stone at the monster to get that achievement. Use the lighter now with that same uh, pieces of paper that you've just got. There we go. And it's going to... Do you think he thinks it's, uh, you know, a joint or something? No, it's just going to make him a little wet. And he's like, rah, 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 nothing's going to happen to me. Except it is, because what we're going to do now is use the stone. It's going to be another green bar minigame. Use the stone with the lever on the right... Right hand side of the monster, green bar that schniz up, and skablamo! That electrocutes him to death, that gets us yet another achievement, and we can grab the gas canister from right underneath the monster's butt. So you don't want to know what's been on there, hell nah. But that gets us the achievement there, and we can grab the gas canister and head to the left. Now we are basically, we're almost done, we are almost done, we're going to head back to the street. We're going to go all the way to the left. Uh, sort of back to the beginning of the area.
And now what we're going to do when we get there, oh yeah, we can run for the first time in the game with the left trigger. <laughs> now we're going to use the gas canister with the bus to get a lot of cutscene, a lot of dialogue, but this is one where I kind of slowed it down because it got very, very interesting. So, um... I mean, obviously, if you just want to spam through it, job, uh, you know, you can as well. But there's a lot of twists and turns. Very interesting to see what happens and why things happen with each character. Wait, what are you going to do? You to pieces. So, is Alex dead? Well, we're going to find out uh, in just a bit. But what we're going to do first as Mr. Trust, we're going to interact with the cabinet to get dressed. Looking good. Interact with the boxes at the top. Nah, that's not going to work. So we need to grab the stool from uh, just to the left of us right there. And then when we grab that, then we can click back on the boxes to get the red tablecloth. Now, we're wondering, Adam Trust got married? That's an interesting thought. Who did he get married to? Let's find out. Go to the door to the right, and it's little mashed potato. So, she got out of her hook, hooker face. Oh, and look, it's Katie as well. That's nice. So, yeah, so she he married the old mashed potato, and now this is where all the story gets completely interesting. Now we're going to find out what happened to everyone and why. Strap in. It's a really, really good ending. And we've still got just a few more things left to do. So we're going to interact with the shelf first. So we can interact with the photo. Great looking photo, by the way. It looks like me, what I used to look like. Uh, interact with the pills. They're my uh, HRT, Hormone Replacement Therapy pills. And then we're going to interact with the articles on the top as well. And then from there, we can interact with the dust on the left-hand side. And basically, it's where her statuette was. So before she got uh, hit and run and turned into a... Wheelchair user, as it were. Uh, yeah, she was quite the model. So interact with the beads now underneath the table. And now I'm pretty sure this is the complete end of the game. And we're really going to find out what happened to everyone after we interact with the desk. Uh, next, we're going to interact with the doggy beds. Uh, oh, the pillows first, sorry. So interact with the pillows first. Yeah, and now we're going to go, hmm, Nika. Well, this is an interesting outcome. Next, we're going to interact with the dog beds on the bottom left-hand corner. And then we're going to interact with the window. And then after this one, Lilia appears, and then it all kicks on.
Right, when uh, Big Chungus, who for some reason feels it's uh, necessary to wear sunglasses inside, he's not that cool, just interact with the blood sample report once until the dialogue finishes, then go and speak to Lilia again. put in jail, but this hell is not over yet. Thank you, Mo Adam, don't listen to him. And there we go then, guys and gals. So that is the end of Almost My Floor. Very interesting and fantastic story. Again, I really did enjoy that one, and I hope you did as well. I hope the guide helped as well. If it did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well. Uh, thanks uh, for checking me out on my socials as well. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon. And again, a huge, massive shout-out to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon. You guys and gals are just legendary as hell. And that is that for that one. So I shall see you in the next one, guys and gals. Big love.